1934, the famous author Upton Sinclair, who had, had written The Jungle uh, decades before, but then wrote many other muckraking books and novels that made him one of the most famous authors in the world, <clears throat> decided to run for governor of California in the depths of the depression, uh, switching his party allegiance from socialist to Democrat um, at a time when FDR was popular. And um, lo and behold, he inspired one of the greatest mass movements in the history of the country uh, called End Poverty in California or EPIC. Um, they published their own newspaper. They got 2 million circulation. They had hundreds of clubs around the, uh, around the state and so forth. And um, amazingly, he went on to win the Democratic primary in a landslide in August of 1934 and appeared headed for victory. Uh, so all the forces arrayed against him, which included Republicans, conservative and moderate Democrats, um, and others, uh, businessmen, big business, Hollywood, certainly, um, formed together to defeat him at all costs. And um, of course, my book goes into all this at great length, all the many uh, wild uh, schemes to defeat him. Uh, and uh, among them was, uh, and importantly, was uh, Hollywood Studios, most notably MGM, under producer Irving Thalberg, uh, creating three uh, newsreels that were then shown in theaters at the peak of the campaign. And of course, at that time, newsreels and, and film in general was tremendously popular. and People went and uh, were tremendously affected by these movie shorts and newsreels that they saw. Ladies and gentlemen, I am the inquiring cameraman. All day I travel around California, the highways and the byways, the downtown districts, the residence districts, the factory districts, all districts. I stop people on the street. I pry into offices and shops and stores and restaurants. I knock on the doors of homes, all for the purpose of digging out voters of California to express their views for your edification. Remember, they're not actors, they're nervous. You'd be scared to death yourself the first time you face the camera and microphone. If they seem awkward, bear with them. I don't rehearse them, I'm impartial. I ask them questions only to help them express themselves more clearly. What do you see in these um, newsreels that, that's a clue to you that they're not what they say they are? <laughs> well, uh, I think as we go along, you'll, it'll be, be pretty obvious, but I, it, even if you just wanna take the word of uh, Hollywood people and others who viewed them at the time, they would recognize actors from the MGM stable, you know, not B actors, or not uh, well-known actors, portraying some of these people you just saw interviewed. Um, with uh, scripts uh, that were written for them. So they're basically reading lines. Some of them are no doubt authentic. Uh, many of them are uh, actors performing, uh, performing a script written for them. Um, and uh, people at the time would howl uh, and just you know, Sinclair supporters would kind of laugh about it and uh, maybe not realizing the impact these newsreels would have on the average voter, which was, uh, which was indeed considerable. Uh, I should just say at the outset here that this was very unusual. Uh, I call them the first attack ads on the screen, um, which then of course became a, a television uh, 25 years, 30 years later. Um, but uh, these were really the first, uh, the first use of the screen to defeat a candidate with uh, you know, what would now be called attack ads. <laughs> 